dear colleagues, good morning. First of all, I want to thank you, to thank uh, Professor Petrov for the kind invitation and for this wonderful meeting. And without losing any time, I begin with the first presentation, which is uh, called Retrograde Access for BTK and CLTI Interventions. Uh, this is my disclosures. Uh, the beginning, as you can see, the first data we have about, uh, about the retrograde access is from uh, 1988 Thomason uh, retrograde uh, popliteal artery access. Then in 90, uh, 1990, we have a retrograde tibial access via a cut down. And uh, the years to come, we have uh, different, evi uh, different evidence about the usefulness of retrograde access. The first one is from uh, Mustafa, Mustafa, Mustafa Tami Technique, tibial pedal arterial mini minimally invasive retrograde revascularization, then Craig Walker and uh, this prospective move center observational study, retrograde tibial peroneal access, uh, a big series from uh, Andre Schmidt and from Sylvester. Uh, the first uh, systematic review and meta-analysis is um, uh, from this group, uh, uh, which includes uh, also Mariano Palena and Armstrong. Uh, as you can see, CLTI patients, uh, 900, 1,900 uh, patients, technical success, 96%, perforations uh, as a complication, 2.1%, for limiting dissections, 0.6%, distal embolization, 0.1%, and hematoma, 1.3%. The next um, uh, systematic review is uh, so fresh. It's from uh, May this year, uh, from Guy Martin. Three, uh, 38 uh, papers, uh, also nine, uh, 1,900 patients. You can see how many uh, retrograde procedures, primary retrograde access in uh, 50 45% of the cases, majority second line following fail, failed integrated uh, access. Complication rate was uh, total 11% and puncture-related puncture 9%. Uh, why I show 7 and 4? Because uh, popliteal puncture uh, was uh, used 25% of the cases, but uh, uh, observed with 50% uh, of all the complications. When we remove the popliteal puncture, the total complication is 7% and the puncture-related complications are 4%. Uh, when to do a retrograde access, this is a game of words. If you cannot proceed antigradely, then you go retrograde. Uh, so in failed antigrade access, uh, in the past uh, I struggled a lot to go antigrade, but when I adopt um, the retrograde uh, technique, I give myself 10 to 15 minutes and then go retrograde or switch to a re-entry device. But the re-entry devices are very um, not, not so cheap, so the cheapest re-entry device is the retrograde puncture, to my opinion. Uh, retrograde, uh, retrograde access we use also in challenging integrate uh, access anatomy, morbid, uh, obesity, inability to lay flat, uh, hostile groin anatomy, long uh, CTOs, and so on. Where to do the distal puncture, the retrograde puncture, the most commonly used sites, this is a wonderful illustration from Schmidt, is, uh, the, are the uh, distal uh, crural arteries, the dorsal pedal artery, the posterior uh, tibial artery, and my favorite um, access point is the proximal ATA, and of course the peroneal artery. But uh, from this um, meta-analysis of Silvestro, you can see here the antero, the antero uh, lateral approach to the tibial uh, TPT, tibial peroneal trunk, and the distal popliteal artery through the interocean membrane. This is the popliteal axis. Uh, it's, uh, the patient is in supine, uh, sup uh, supine position, and uh, you can use, uh, where we surgeons make our access below the knee. This is the, the, the place to puncture. Uh, nowadays, it's more and more um, infrequent to use uh, the patient in prone position to puncture the popliteal artery because there is so much, uh, so much uh, complications. 
And of course, uh, we have to mention the Italian, uh, our Italian friends, Mariano Palena and Marco Manzi, and uh, they are extremely ordinary interventions, like you, as you can see here, transmetatarsal or transplantal plantar retrograde access uh, to, the, uh, in, uh, to the crural arteries. Why to do that? We use, um, this is the C-top classification by Mustafa. Uh, we have four types of uh, caps uh, for the occlusion. Type 1 is the easiest to go anti-grade. Type 2, you can go anti-grade or retrograde. Type 3 is the, the meanest of them all. As you can see, you always uh, maybe uh, go into dissection and have to use different techniques, safari, cart, and so on. And type 4 is uh, very suitable for uh, retrograde access. But there are some procedures where uh, distal access, retrograde access is obligatory. This is a case of mine with um, using the Presto technique to, uh, for implantation of Supera, as you uh, well know. Supera is a very good stand, but you know where to start and uh, you don't know where to finish. So the Presto techniques uh, is uh, giving this opportunity to implant the Supera from the ostium of the a superficial artery, not to overlay the deep femoral artery, and uh, the retrograde access is um, obligatory for this technique. As you can see here, I'm using uh, this technique sheetlessly with the supera, and this is the final result, result with the supera implantation from the ostium of the SFA. How to do that? First of all, you have to plan your retrograde puncture site. You have to choose which uh, crural artery or pedal artery to, to use. I strongly recommend uh, ultrasound guidance for some of the cases. This is distal SFA. Uh, you can use the ultrasound guidance. You can use it for a posterior tibial artery, for uh, dorsal pedal artery. Uh, what, is, what are the, uh, the advantages? No x-ray, no contrast, real-time visualization, and of course, better accuracy. Under fluoroscopic guidance, uh, you can uh, retrogradely puncture, as, as I showed you, the TPT, the typical peroneal trunk, proximal ATA, and peroneal artery. I always uh, start with a uh, workhorse wire. My favorite workhorse is O18 uh, command wire, and sometimes V18. Uh, other, this is other my uh, preference, uh, the sheetless approach. Uh, I use braided support mainly, CXI or Navicross by Terumu, but uh, the Carnelian from Biotronic is a very good uh, support catheter too. For the above the knee lesions, usually I finish with anti-grade finish. For the BTK uh, lesions, you can finish the case in a retrograde fashion. This is a typical setup, the anti-grade puncture, this is a five French fortress, and the distal puncture, as you can see, the proximal ATA. This is only the guide wire. The, the braided catheter will follow afterwards. And this is typical uh, posterior tibial artery access, uh, just uh, at the ankle level. I always use this um, uh, four-frame sheet. It's, a, in fact, a slender sheet from Terumu. Uh, it uh, can accommodate a five-frame device. And uh, this is um, the, the angio for when, uh, when I go in the posterior tibial artery. And this is the Navicross here. Uh, some interesting cases, uh, assist, so-called assisted retrograde puncture. This is by Dr. Risa, uh, first described. When you make the pedal whoop, and you have no support to continue with the posterior tibial artery, he puts uh, a small balloon and just puncture the balloon and continue in uh, retrograde fashions with enough support. And this is a case uh, from uh, our friend Theo Business, uh, so-called modified Schmidt technique. Uh, he uses, when he cannot puncture the, the pedal artery, he uses continuous in, uh, injection of contrast. When he uh, managed to puncture, as you can see, the contrast comes out of the needle, so he knows for sure that he is in the, in the artery. Uh, I want to show you one case with um, a primary retrograde access. This is a 70 years old female, Rutherford 5, uh, arterial hypertension, diabetes mellitus, obesity, smoker, ABI, 0 0.36 only on uh, dorsal pedal artery. This is the CT. As you can see, a relatively short occlusion, easy to, to pass, uh, and only one vessel runoff. But 
this is the, the other view. Uh, impossible anti-grade access. The retrograde access uh, will be very challenging and uh, maybe with the complication. So we choose to go retrograde primarily. This is a four French uh, sheet uh, from the dorsal pedal artery uh, under ultrasound guidance. And this is the crossing with, uh, of course, with the uh, command 18, and this is Navi cross 018. We crossed relatively easy this occlusion. We made the uh, dilatation with four and five French, uh, four and five millimeter balloons, and uh, this is uh, the the result. But uh, as you uh, as you remember, I used ultrasound, so I uh, take a look with ultrasound at this segment, and uh, uh, it uh, it was very bad on ultrasound. So we have to stand that. I used uh, fortunately the the guys from Biotronic uh, gave us. Uh, uh, Pulsar T3, uh, which is uh, a four French device, so we can go retrogradely with this. We implanted a stent, 5 by 80. After the dilatation, the post dilatation, you can see the final result, very good, and the one vessel run off. So, the conclusions after the data we have first of all, this is a safe and feasible procedure with low complication rate, very good primary technical success, as you can see from the meta analysis. Technique uh, has evolved over time. Uh, bailout technique or primary access route in specific cases. A must-have technique for modern endovascular specialists. Uh, success related to patient positioning, puncture site, lesion anatomy, of course, the device size. And uh, finally, retrograde puncture is more than 30 years old of age, but unfortunately, many endovascular specialists are still afraid to embrace it. So thank you for your attention.